What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Ilya Tapuria sends a warning to Max Holloway. Ilya Tapuria doesn't dispute that Max Holloway is one of the greatest featherweights of all time, but the current featherweight king continues to insist that Blessed is in for all sorts of trouble at UFC 308. Topuria will battle Holloway at the upcoming October 26 card, which is going down in Abu Dhabi. Leading up to the fight, Topuria has acknowledged that Holloway is a legend and has even confirmed that the Hawaiian star was essentially an idol of his back in the day. But similar to what Topuria said leading up to his championship win over Alexander Volkanovsky, the fighter of Georgian descent has insisted he's going to take Holloway out. Case in point, recently Topuria shared out this image and a quote via Instagram. On my way to Abu Dhabi, Max Holloway, you're effed. Note that Topuria isn't just saying he'll beat Holloway, he's claiming he'll become the first man in the star's history to finish him with strikes. Do you think that Topuria will be able to do what no one else has? Another person Topuria has been targeting with verbal jabs in recent months is Conor McGregor, who, as it happens, is in Spain this weekend for the latest BKFC card. Topuria was born in Germany to Georgian parents, but since he grew up in Spain, he also carries that nation's flag. Well, when McGregor was recently asked about Topuria and the fact he fights out of Spain, the notorious one was quick to fire back at the champion. I know Ilya Topuria has had a lot to say. F***ing country. F***ing yeah, this is in his home country. This is my home country, baby. My Bay of Spain, where's he at? This ain't his home country. He knows where his home country is, and it's not España. So, uh, good luck, Max Holloway. F*** up. Ilya Topuria posted on social media inviting Conor McGregor to an open sparring session. Here's what he had to say. I'm terrible at Conor's career, okay? More check. I'm official with the other shit, guys. Chen Shori said, okay, Tsar Mood Ganeli Ari Magram, Mom Dono Momza de Varome Kneva, Che Guzlia, he has sparring in Gawa Keto Tsadats. She was there, Movideski there, Sam Sotks Movi one road, Daik Marn or Shetswalon, round up Shoris. Footage of a young Ilya Topuria and Hamza Chimaev training with each other was released today. Here's the clip. It's certainly clear that there's no love loss between McGregor and Topuria at this point, and it's also interesting to hear McGregor relaying he hopes his former foe, Holloway, messes the champion up. Will that happen? We'll find out soon enough. If you're also wondering about the possibility of Topuria and McGregor throwing hands at some juncture, that seems pretty unlikely, given how jacked McGregor is at this point of his career. Some would argue McGregor fighting at any weight right now seems like a stretch. Jamal Hill versus Yuri Prohaska next? Last weekend, Jamal Hill made headlines by taking a poke at Alex Pereira's stoppage win over Khalil Roundtree. You may have seen him pretending to yawn after the fight, but it looks like Yuri Prohaska could be standing in the way of his path back to another title shot. Ever since Hill was flattened by Pereira this past April, he's been talking about running it back with Poetan, the same man who has defeated Prohaska not once but twice. Well, recently, both Prohaska and Hill reported by a social media that they've been offered fights, prompting folks to suspect that the former champions are fighting each other. Hill posted, Contract is already on the way. Name has already hit the desk. Class will be in session soon. While Yuri posted an image of him signing a contract and the words, Good morning from Japan. Signed. So as this video is being produced, there's been no official word from the UFC about this matchup, but this would certainly make sense if the promotion has tabled a Hill versus Prohaska fight. After all, Prohaska is currently ranked number one in the light heavyweight division and Hill's number three. Further, both men are coming off losses to Pereira. The social media posts also come not long after Khalil Roundtree proclaimed he thinks a scrap with Hill is inevitable. While talking with Yahoo Sports' Kevin Iola, following his recent loss to Alex Pereira, Roundtree said the following about fighting Hill. I think it's almost inevitable, right? I think he's ranked number three, so I think anyone up there in the top five is kind of inevitable. So let's see what happens. I think pretty shortly there, I'll be talking to the matchmakers and the bosses and see what they think. Well, it certainly looks like Roundtree will not be fighting Hill in the immediate future, but all that aside, if Hill and Prohaska are set to battle, who are you picking to win? And how far out is each man from fighting for the belt again? Up next, Bilal Muhammad versus Shavkat Rachmanov confirmed. After weeks of speculation regarding if and when Bilal Muhammad and Shavkat Rachmanov will scrap, Dana White has announced the two will indeed throw down at UFC 310. Ever since Muhammad took the welterweight title from Leon Edwards at UFC 304 in July, the consensus has been that Rachmanov would be next for the new champion. After all, in Rachmanov, we're talking about a dude who has never lost and he's finished all 18 opponents he's faced to date. 
and that includes six UFC opponents. How obscenely good is that? Well, following recent comments from Muhammad's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, that Bilal is ready to fight in December, White confirmed he will battle Rachmanov on December 7th. Not only that, White announced that the Vegas card will feature flyweight champion Alexandre Pantoja taking on newcomer Kai Asakura. Now, if you don't follow Japanese MMA, you may not know that Asakura was the champion of that nation's biggest promotion, Ryzen. Not surprisingly, White did not mention that. He also didn't mention that Asakura holds a KO win over former UFC title challenger Kyoji Horiguchi, who no longer is with the promotion. Further, the Nick Diaz vs. Vicente Luque fight has been rebooked for UFC 310, as has the heavyweight scrap between Alexander Volkov and Cyril Gaon. So what's your take on the card? It may not feature any of the promotion's superstars. Nick Diaz was one of them at one point, but are you excited for the event? And do you see Rachmanov booting Bilal from the welterweight throne? Conor McGregor calls out Floyd Mayweather to a BKFC fight. It's been over seven years since Conor McGregor boxed Floyd Mayweather Jr., but McGregor is still hoping to avenge his 2017 loss to the decorated pugilist. For some time following his stoppage loss to Mayweather Jr., McGregor campaigned for a rematch and challenged the boxer to step into the cage. In more recent years, however, McGregor hasn't really talked about Floyd very much. But while on hand at this weekend's BKFC event, McGregor challenged Mayweather to take off the gloves and fight him. Floyd, you little f***er! You all right? You're doing bad co uh, conversations, trying to get a boxing match at 155. Fight me my way, on the A-side. You owe your f***ing self. Bare knuckle, McGregor Mayweather, 170 pounds. Let's go, baby. Take off the gloves and fight. You know, there is conversations ongoing. I fought Floyd at 153 pounds, which is a low weight for me. So he brought me all the way down. It was over 12 rounds. I'd never fought 12 rounds. So, you know, now the discussion is, is at my weight, higher heavyweight, 170 pounds, and maybe less rounds. So I would fancy it. I had him bent over. You see me, I had him bent over. So what more do you want me to do? <laughs> you want me to finish the job no. when I have him bent over? Do you need a second part with my weather? I don't need. I am so blessed by God. I don't need nothing. <laughs> I don't need. I have. I have. But I like a fight. Now, is there any chance of this happening? There's probably a greater chance of CM Punk fighting one more time in the UFC. After all, before and after Mayweather faced McGregor, he teased he would give MMA a go, and that never happened. Now, Mayweather is 47, and he'll turn 48 in February, so the odds of him fighting Conor in a bare-knuckle bout are slim to none. Further, McGregor still needs to finish up his UFC contract. Speaking of decorated boxers, one of the planet's best pound-for-pound -pound fighters, Terence Crawford, has been raising eyebrows by campaigning for a fight with Conor. Not just because Crawford is one of the galaxy's best boxers, but because he's hinting he'd be willing to fight McGregor in MMA. Recently, he shared out this clip via social media. Get back on the mat. Get back on the mat. Get back on the mat. Hey, Connor. Get back on the mat. Stay tuned, baby. Stay tuned. So could this fight happen? If Crawford is willing to cross over into MMA and is contractually able to do so, you never know. The UFC might take a look at it. There's no doubt a super fight between McGregor and Crawford would generate a lot of interest. Former UFC champion calls out UFC in lawsuit. Following the recent settlement that was reached in an antitrust lawsuit that multiple fighters brought against the UFC, some troubling details are emerging about former champion Fabricio Verdum. On account of the settlement, statements that were submitted by participating fighters in the suit have become a matter of public record. More recently, journalist John S. Nash shared out a statement from Verdum, who unified the UFC's heavyweight title back in 2015 by submitting Cain Velasquez. Here's some of what Verdum reported in his statement. While fighting for the UFC, I suffered many concussions. I fear that during my career, I've suffered traumatic brain injury, TBI, and am noticing symptoms common with TBI and CTE, including irritability, anger, anxiety, insomnia, and memory loss. I have many lesions and scarring in my brain, and I have a cyst that is centrally located within my brain, making surgery thus far impossible. Obviously, this is very unsettling news, and sadly, Verdum isn't the only fighter to report similar medical issues. Former Pride champion, the legendary Vanderlei Silva, shared similar sad news via the suit. While fighting for the UFC, I suffered many injuries, including concussions. I fear that during my career, I've suffered traumatic brain injury and am noticing symptoms common with TBI and CTE, including depression, mood swings, and irritability. To date, no treatment for CTE has been found. I suffer from sleep apnea and have difficulty sleeping and breathing. Due to medical and or financial issues, 51 of the suit's fighters declared their support for the settlement and the compensation the 
they're going to receive. The settlement will see reportedly $375 million dispersed to the participating fighters. Lawsuit aside, the sad news is we're likely to hear more and more fighters reporting that they are suffering symptoms common with CTE in the coming years, similar to what we've seen unfold in boxing. Juliana Pena goes off on Kayla Harrison and Amanda Nunez. It remains to be seen who Juliana Pena will fight next, now that she holds the UFC Women's Bantamweight title once again. But the outspoken fighter has made it clear her primary target is a rubber match with the legendary Amanda Nunez. Pena rocked the MMA world to its very core in 2021 when she ended Nunez's reign as the Bantamweight champion by submitting her in the second round. Since Nunez had won 12 straight before that loss, she was tapped for an immediate title shot, and she proceeded to reclaim the title by a unanimous decision win. Well, following Pena's win over Raquel Pennington at UFC 307, Nunez shared out a video in which she told Dana White to call her. In a subsequent interview with SiriusXM, Pena went off on Nunez as well as Kayla Harrison, who defeated Ketlin Vieira by decision the same night. According to Pena, nothing Harrison showed that night worries her, and further, she maintains the decorated judoka cannot compete at 135. And while talking about Nunez and her video for White, Pena did not hold back. I want you. I know that you retired too early. The first fight I took your pride. The second fight I took your soul. Make it into the octagon for this trilogy fight, and she can't do it. So she said to the promotion, oh, Dana White, I'm shaking my ass, and then I'm tagging you because I miss you, and call me, and what, what, what. And then they call her, and what does she say? Oh, well, I just want to see what happens between Kayla and Juliana and I'll take the winner. You're not retired. You're biding your time, Amanda Nunes. You are biding your time. And Kayla Harrison, get in line because I got unfinished business to attend to. And everyone wants to say, Pena's coach, Mike Valley, from VFS Academy in Chicago, however, stepped back from saying he wasn't impressed with Harrison's most recent performance. And while talking to MMA Junkie, he said this, I can't say that we weren't impressed. She's a great fighter. She's very good in certain areas. It's nothing that the world hasn't seen. It's not nothing we can't come on top of. She's good, but Juliana is good too. When you get her in front of you, you realize how good she is. That's what makes it very interesting. Whenever Harrison sees Juliana in front of her, she's going to be like, oh my god, this girl's way better than what I think, and she's going to be in tons of trouble. That's what it is. That's what makes the fight so interesting. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Will the UFC pull out all the stops and try to get Nunez back for a trilogy fight with Pena? Or will the promotion tap Harrison to fight Pena next? Which bout do you want to see more? Conor McGregor reveals his next UFC fight date. While walking down the street, Conor revealed that he'll be fighting on February 1st, and his opponent is Dan Hooker. What's your message? What's your message to Floyd? Conor, do we have a date for the comeback yet? February 4th, Saudi Arabia. Who's the opponent? The two were seen talking in the octagon at BKFC's event, which is where the conversation was started. Dan Hooker then reacted to the news of his next fight with Conor McGregor on Submission Radio. Here's what he had to say. Um, we, we had a few words in, inside of the ring, but yeah, February 1st, next on me uh, in Saudi. Yeah, we'll get that, we'll get that thing straight away. Um, I think we're both very similar. There's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, we just spoke in the ring and just, like, I'm on board, he's on board. We just need to get the UFC on board and, and we'll get this thing across the line. The MMA community roasted Connor for his fight news by saying, Believing Connor is coming back to fight is like believing your dad is coming back with the milk 20 years later. Bro just walks and says the first word that comes to his mind. I have a higher chance of becoming a billionaire than Connor McGregor coming back to the UFC. This crackhead not fighting again. Hooker versus Connor makes a lot of sense for Connor. Hooker is on a winning streak and his stock is high at the moment. He's a win away from the title shot. So if Connor could come back and beat Hooker, he takes all of that from Hooker and he himself can get back into the lightweight title picture. Top comments. LMAO, the Anthony Smith comment by Ankalaev. What Mario pretty much said, I just wanted to hug him. Yes, Corey versus Sean O'Malley is what the fans want to see. Buckley definitely squandered them missed opportunities after that brutal KO. His last five wins have redeemed him, calling out Usman has a great shout out. 